Drugs Pharmacy, your local good name of pharmacy for over 17 years. I like that, your local good name of pharmacy. That's good. And it does have a home-like uh, feeling when you go in there. Everybody knows one another, and it's really good. Scott Drugs has been serving the Plainfield community for several decades. Oliver is a pharmacist with 29 years of experience. He graduated from Long Island University College of Pharmacy, Brooklyn, New York, in 1988. Shortly after graduation, he went to work for Pathmark Pharmacy in Brooklyn. From there, he went on to Montefiore Hospital, Rikers Island Division. He worked, yeah, that's some special stuff. He worked there for several years and did locum tenens at several pharmacies and hospitals, including Kings County Hospital, Brooklyn, before heading back to school for his Doctor of Pharmacy degree from the University of Florida. Okay, I have a testimony. You know, I'm a creature of habit. In fact, Pete has always said that if they closed off, that I'm terrible, I shouldn't even say this, but he says that I am so much a creature of habit that if they closed my block, that I would never be able to find my house. Now, I will tell you I got lost one day, but it's all right, it was during the hurricane. It was dark outside, y'all, it was really dark. But now my testimony is this, I've been saying this for two years that I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna make sure it's my business. Please tell me how, Mr. Quanta, to do this to make sure that there's no gap in, in my medication. But I've been taking my, my uh, prescriptions over to Rite Aid in South Plainfield, but I'm coming home, y'all. I'm going to Scott Drugs, okay? And I hope y'all will follow me and go to Scott Drugs as well. We have to support our own right in our community, right? Okay, all right. Absolutely, so again, congratulations to both of you. I know your, your daughter and son are here. I told y'all, they're like mini y'all, because they look, stand up please, daughter and son. Right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you again and congratulations. All right, you're welcome. Dr. Enquanta and Mr. Enquanta, please give them a rousing round of applause. Huh? Oh, my apologies, I'm so sorry. I'll bring the mic to you because I'm so sorry. Y'all almost got away, right? <laughs> Who are trying to avoid this, but you get caught. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you all uh, for coming and uh, for this honor to award me the sixth evening. I want to thank Ms. Uh, Abyssin Briggs for nominating us for this. I remember the last time we had a service at the senior center. Both of us were there, and the seniors came there, and then we had to give them free double check and sugar check. Uh, I want to thank the NWCP for honoring us tonight. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's not by our might, but by the grace of God that we are here today. So, yeah, we will continue to do what we do for the neighborhood for our people, and we ask God to give us the grace and fortitude to carry on. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 please vote for the couple. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen, bless you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh thank you. All right. Oh, you did a fantastic job. <laughs> okay, and our next honoree, she is receiving our Legacy Award. And as you read her bio, and I'm going to read some to you in a moment, you will see why she's receiving our Legacy Award. She has quite, quite, quite... Um, a great background and great experiences. She's done a lot, a lot, a lot. And I learned so much by reading. I thought I knew Dr. Willa Cofield, and I read that bio, and oh my goodness, I was blown away. I was absolutely, I love history and stuff, so that all these bios are just so fantastic with everything. I don't know how anyone has time to work, because we're all volunteering and doing good stuff for folks, so which is great. Let's bring Dr. Willa Cofield, please. Give her a round of applause. And her daughter, my school chum, Tanya. Woohoo! And you'll see Tanya's name in the bio.
that as well. Okay, do you do, please, ladies? This is presented to you for the City of Plainfield and City Join these ladies in saying that Dr. Cofield's life is a documentary. If you read her bio, and I'm going to read some. Willa Cofield is a retired educator who has devoted her life to community uplift and social justice. She now resides in Plainfield but cherishes deep roots in Enfield, North Carolina. As a result of her involvement in the 1960s struggle for civil rights in her hometown, Enfield school authorities fired her. Too bad for them. In a benchmark case, she successfully sued both the city and the county. Woohoo! Both boards of education, along with other officials in federal court. The National Education Association estimated that her case, get this, saved the jobs of 40,000 black teachers across the South. Okay? Okay, you hear what this doctor did? She said, take my job, I'll fix you. <laughs> I'm getting 40,000 more. Hmm. Okay, and then I mentioned her daughter Tanya up here because uh, in 1964, Dr. Cofield's daughter Tanya, then only six years old, was one of the six courageous black children who integrated the all-white Enfield graded school. Okay. After Willis firing, when no school would hire her, she moved to Durham and worked in the community organization arm of the North Carolina Fund and later 
the Low Income Housing Development Corporation. Both agencies sought to upgrade the social and economic status of the state's disadvantaged citizens. And I'm going to scoop down a little bit and say that currently, Dr. Cofield continues her lifelong love for teaching, community, and social justice through the work with Women in Conversation, this fine organization that's here with her tonight, and the People's Organization for Progress. See Mr. Steve Hatcher with POP that's here tonight. Thank you for joining us, all of you. And the Black Women's History Group right here in the center. College? Conference. Conference, excuse me. The Black Women's History Conference. So thank you all for being here. She's producing a second video documentary about the struggle against racism in Eastern North Carolina and writing a book with former high school students. I bring to you Dr. Willa Kofi. to their graves with no recognition that they had made any sacrifice, that they had done anything to help. So I want to focus on those people. I want to call the names of some of those people. I want to start with Tonya's father, whose name was Reed Johnson, who got things started in our community who went to his grave with no recognition that he had done anything unusual. I want to have you hear the name of Tyler Vaughn, of Lily Cousin Smith, who also were leaders in our community. I want to call the name of some students, some brave, courageous students, who walked through this town and tried to change things. Some of them were dragged by the police for blocks. They bear scars today that they got when they were jailed. I want to call the name of Cynthia Cousins Samuelson, of Mildred Bobbitt Sexton, of Yvonne Anderson Hughes, these were brave students. They were only 14 or 15 years old, but they stood up like adults and they faced authorities in a town that was so racist that you would not believe it. The symbol, and I am working with these students now, we are trying to come together to write so that we can leave some legacy, so that people will will know about what happened in India. And one of the students said, you know what we should call the book? We should call it the nine o'clock whistle. Now nobody who was not alive in India at that time would know what that title means. But in this town, on Saturdays, black people would come into the town from the farms all around and they would crowd the streets downtown. And so the town authorities decided that these people were there too long, they were too rowdy, and so at nine o'clock on every Saturday night, a siren went off for about five minutes. And that meant 
black people go home. But there came the night when it was really a week after the March on Washington, and students had got, gone to Washington and they came back to Enfield and they decided we are going to defy, we're going to pick it with, the town had passed an ordinance that said no one under 21 could pick it. So the students said, we are going to defy that. And so they did. And they locked all of our protesters up. And people from around the surrounding area heard about what was happening in Enfield and they crowded the streets and it frightened the town authorities. So they blew the whistle, but nobody left. They blew the whistle again, and people sang freedom songs. And so finally, they brought the fire truck out with the hoses that you saw if you were alive during that time, and they washed our people off the streets. So we want to remember those events and put them down to so they will become a part of our history. Because if we don't, if we don't do it, it will be forgotten. Right. 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 So I want to accept this award in the name of those students and those adults who so bravely challenged racism in Enfield, North Carolina. I also want to include people that I have known and worked with in New Jersey who walked the streets of Newark protesting police brutality and economic injustice, and who walked the streets of Plainville protesting the closing of Muhlenberg Hospital. I want to remember when it comes to community service, two people who are very, were very dear to me, my son-in-law, Eric Watson, who gave his life to this community, and Dr. Shirley Cathy, yeah. who so recently left us to join the ancestors. And finally, I salute my sisters in the Black Women's History Conference, who are building a strong new organization from the ashes of the old, and then, beyond them, I salute all of you who daily struggle to live honest, courageous lives, to keep families and households together, to give children, our children, love and support, to keep the skies from falling in our community. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Wow. That's Dr. Willa Cofield, everyone. Just a second. Doctor, there's a presentation for you. This is, from, <clears throat> this is from the Black Women's History Conference. We know how much Willa loves flowers, and we thought she might enjoy these. All right, another rousing round of applause, please, for Dr. Willa Cofield, our Legacy Award winner. Okay, a couple of years ago, thank you, I decided that, you know what, as the NAACP, we needed to add another category to our honorees, and that is to have uh, our youthful honorees. We had our young at heart, and now we have our youthful honorees as well. Uh, usually high school seniors. And I'll tell you why in a moment, because of something um, 
that I like to do for them. And I'd like us all to be able to participate if we can, please. So, I think we should bring them up together. What do you think? Let's bring them up together, please. You saw them earlier, but they're still here with us tonight because there's more for them. Ms. Taylor Patterson and Mr. Kemet Robinson, please come up. Our youth, our youth of excellence at Monterey. Now, you know, as young people, they've got lots of folks that support them, so if your family wants to come up with y'all, you know, that's fine too. Anybody back there, y'all shy. Okay. All righty. Okay, so we're going to start with Miss Taylor Patterson first. Okay, our councilwoman. On behalf of the city of Plainfield and the city council, we hereby extend this place and congratulations to you. We appreciate you. Okay, this is for. Taylor Patterson, our Youth Excellence Community Service Award on behalf of the Plainfield Area NAACP. We say congratulations to you. And also, we, thank you. we know that earlier today um, we have received a proclamation for Taylor from her mayor from Charlotte, North Carolina, which she has. So please make sure to stop by her office and tell her thank you, okay? And also from Assemblyman Jerry Green, representing the 22nd Legislative District. This is for you, sweetie pie. Okay, absolutely. I'm gonna read some of your bio and then I'm gonna pass you the mic and then we're going to Kevin, okay? And Taylor, as I mentioned, lives in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she took the serious red eye this morning to get here, to be here today. So we appreciate you coming up, sweetie pie, absolutely. Taylor Patterson is a high school senior at Cato Middle College High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Taylor aspires to obtain her Doctor of Pharmacy. <laughs> you know, we can keep her. All right, with the promise of employment, we can keep her. Hi, how are you? Okay, she aspires to obtain her Doctor of Pharmacy and then serve in the Navy. Taylor has always had high expectations and has demonstrated continual growth and has far exceeded the requirements set for students. As an elementary school student, Taylor received the prestigious President's Award for Excellence and Achievement in Elementary School. In middle school, Taylor continued to plan for higher achievements by completing some of her high school requirements. Her strategic planning and academic excellence afforded her the opportunity to attend Cato Middle College High School. Taylor will complete high school with both a diploma and an associate in science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Currently, yes, it's excellent. I hear some extra clapping back there from the family. <laughs> okay. All righty. Let's see. Where was I? I'm sorry. So Taylor will complete. Okay. Taylor is a member of the North Carolina STEM Alliance and is conducting undergraduate research in pharmaceutical ethics. Although education is important, Taylor realizes the importance of giving back to the community. During the summer months, she dedicates her time to serving residents in the Plainfield area through service with Ruth Fellowship Ministries, woohoo, and the Plainfield area NAACP, woohoo, <laughs> two of my favorites, you know. Taylor works to improve the community one project at a time. And I'm going to skip down and say Taylor is a hardworking young lady with a dedication to service. Her goal is to become a Navy officer in which she will serve her government and still provide assistance to those in need. 
whether those will be services to men, women, or citizens that she must help. She will respond with dedication, commitment, and knowledge. Taylor wants to thank the Plainfield area NAACP and her family for their support. I give you Ms. Taylor Patterson. and just thank two important people, my mother and father. Without them, none of this would be possible. And I think it's important that all of our youth realize this. I was born into a fortunate family, and so I spent a lot of my time giving back to those who aren't as fortunate. So I spent a lot of my time working with students with disability in low-income schools. I hope that some, some child out there takes from me and learns to give back as well. So thank you for the time. That was Ms. Taylor Patterson, and now Mr. Kenneth Robinson. Give him a round of applause, please. On behalf of the City of Plainfield and the City Council, we hereby give this praise and congratulations to NAACP, uh, Kemet Robinson, we award you this Youth Excellence Community Service Award. Congratulations. He's shy, but wait until those girls in college get home. <laughs> Thank you. And also, also, on behalf of Assemblyman Jerry Green, representing the 22nd Legislative District, this is for you as well, Kemet. Okay, congratulations. Thank you, and now for some of his bio. He wants you to know his name is Kemet Robinson, and he's a senior at Piscataway High School, and his mayor was here uh, earlier this evening. Throughout my four years of high school, he says he's been able to achieve high honor roll for each semester. Yes, I know, right? He's the two brainiacs up here. In addition, he's been just as productive outside the classroom as in, running for the varsity cross country and track teams for all four years and volunteering regularly throughout the community. On behalf of young people in Plainfield and Piscataway, I am thankful to have had the opportunity to volunteer my time in various capacities to help improve their quality of life. For instance, he's participated in voter registration drives, food and clothing drives, educational and cultural events. In school, he participates in 50 Strong, a prestigious Title I peer mentoring and college readiness program for high achieving young men from underrepresented groups. Mm -hmm. He's also a four year member of the Future Business Leaders of America. He's successfully been able to balance multiple AP classes with various extracurricular activities and he plans on majoring in engineering and computer science at a top tier university. And so Kemet also wants to thank his family for their support and he thanks the Plainfield area NAACP. A round of applause please for Mr. Kemet Robinson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give thanks for my family back there. Yeah, I couldn't have done it without you guys. I love you guys. Okay, I need a little bag, please, because there's something that we need to do. You have one? Oh, oh, that's a big bag. I like that. Thank you. Every year, every year when we have uh, youth honorees, and pardon me for walking while I do this, but every year when we have youth honorees, may I have a popcorn, please, Mom? I always say that, oh, thank you so very much, Reverend and Councilwoman. Give them a round of applause, please. Great job, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. I always acknowledge the fact that, you know, family and friends always do a great job uh, in terms of 
helping out young people moving forward. But we all know that things are extremely costly and for every college that these two young people are going to apply to, there is a cost. And so, all of you wonderful, wonderful folks who are here tonight, I'm asking if you please drop a little something in the bag and it'll be split between these two individuals who are applying for colleges. Okay, so I'm gonna make the first donation. That's my $30. That means no violence for a week. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pass the bag around and if anyone would like to, if anyone would like to make a donation so that these young people have the funds to be able to apply to colleges. Their family is doing a great job supporting them, but we want to support them as well because we love them and we thank them so very much. It's not easy being excellent students in school. There's a lot of peer pressure. There's a lot of things going on. So the fact that these two individuals study so hard and are on the top level at their uh, prospective high schools, it's really amazing. It is really amazing with all the obstacles in life. So we're just so happy and so proud of both of you and thank you and God bless you. Thank you, these individuals are mentors for all of our youth to follow. So God bless you, you know we love you all. Again, Taylor Patterson and Kevin Robinson. Give them a rousing round of applause, please. They're excellent. Okay, please pass that bag around. We have a few more pieces to do and then we will be done for the evening. Let's have a collective rousing round of applause for all of our fabulous honorees this evening. They're wonderful. They've all have done a great job. So thank you all so very, very much. Oh, I know the hour is late, but we gotta do it better than that. A rousing round of applause. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're talking. Thank you. Now, I know my mother's been telling me all my life, Sherry, use your inside voice. I don't think I ever developed one of those. I don't think. I don't know. Okay, everybody, you still have those raffle tickets, right? Okay. I need you to help me do uh, one thing that's in the middle of our journal, our program. I know I just got you revved up, and now I need us to please... I uh, acknowledge a moment of silence because we have we have lost a lot of great people. Dr. Cofield spoke about Eric, Tanya's husband, uh, and many others. And this year, uh, we lost three warriors in the NAACP that's associated with the Plainfield Area Branch. Um, and I want to call their names and then let's please have a moment of silence. My good friend of 20 plus years, many of you knew her, and her husband is here, Mr. Clemmy Owsley. Raise your hand, please, Clemmy. Our good friend, Clemmy, as well. Mrs. Sandra Sandy Owsley. Uh, she just passed in June of this year. One of the judges, Judge Mac Hunter, who I met about 20 years ago, he resides in Plainfield with his wife. Uh, he passed earlier this year. And uh, he was kind enough to actually offer me a job. And so I thank him for that, yes. And then, yes, and then the last name that's there, Mrs. Eleanor Orr, uh, who was someone who got me involved um, in political campaigns in Essex County several years ago. I met her and her family when I was in college. And she just passed about a week ago and her going home service is tomorrow morning. So if we can please give these wonderful, 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 wonderful individuals a respectful moment of silence because they deserve it. Thank you. God take care of them. Rest in peace, everybody. Thank you so very, very much. Now, if I know the three of them, they would say, all right, Sharon, we're not going to be sad. You're going to go right back to business. So in their honor, I'm going to do that. We're going to do the raffles. Oh, can we?